Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jose from Southern Life YouTube channel. And on this video, we're back in Tyler, Texas, where a local radio station picked up our YouTube video. But yeah, they actually wrote an article and they said that my video was full of misinformation and it was a confusing drive through Tyler, Texas. They were surprised that I noted these like lowered pickup trucks. Apparently people in Texas think that the whole entire country does this crap. This radio station's article was like worse than the turning radius on my Yukon. I did some research on the town and I know that you know when I first drove through the town I hadn't done any research. People in Texas are known for nitpicking everything. I mean they drive around these tiny little electric cars. They sit there in a Starbucks drive through for hours. In January, the average temperatures in this town dipped to 20 below zero. But then by June, the scorching heat every day, the mercury hits 110 degrees every single day during June, leaving the locals with heat strokes, brain damage that might explain their confusion about my video. And again, they didn't want any misinformation, so I had to write this all down. I don't like to write stuff down, but I did for this video. Tyler, Texas is known for their giant tamale festival. 500 different types of tamales are made here. However, being Texas, they don't care about the flavor and the taste. Being Texas, they give the award to the person with the biggest tamale. Mr. Gotti's Pizza is where we ate. It's bland. There's nothing special about this pizza place. It's absolutely the best place to eat in this town, being that... Again, being Texas, they don't care about how good the food is. They don't care about the flavor, the seasoning. All they care about is big portions. And Mr. Gaddy's being a corporate company, they're just making their bland regular pizza. And they gave us our sweet tea in a five-gallon bucket. They were all so mad that I mentioned the town's crime statistics or something like that. But look, the, the crime is not a problem here in Texas. Anything more than a misdemeanor puts you in the electric share and traffic infractions can get you up to 10 years in prison. So people here, they're really following the law. Currently, Texas is trying to get rid of the electric share for minors. Instead, just large parking lots where people gather with lowered pickup trucks. And that's where people get most of their education from here. Cultural contribution that the town has made is this type of music called Shopped and Screwed. Now you may have heard it's coming from Texas. Well, it turns out that it actually originated right here in Tyler, Texas, when a DJ at the Canoe radio station passed out on the turntables drunk, drastically slowing down the device when his face kind of hit it, which has led to a huge rivalry between Houston and Tyler, Texas. But believe me, the first DJ to slump over the turntables happened right here in Tyler, Texas. And that's about the only cultural contribution that this city has made to the world. Uh, Texas is trying to destroy its own economy at the moment on purpose to scare away Californians, but it's not working. I'm sure you've heard about Southside Bank. The city has the headquarters for the Southside Bank. Now, this is also a bank that has made some horrible decisions. They actually recently filed for bankruptcy. After putting all their resources, you know, all the money you put in the bank to finance mixtapes for shopped and screwed groups that were local and ended up losing about $500 million in mixtapes for artists who had no talent. Uh, most music now is live streaming on the internet and CDs, which nobody uses that anymore. So the headquarters are there and they are filing for bankruptcy and it employs a lot of people who are mostly just working on trying to clear up that mess right now. So if you're a young professional and you're an attorney or you know you're an expert on law this town could really need your help artists are also trying to sue them they thought they were going on spotify and they end up with actual you know 10,000 actual hard copies of disc even after this mess gets cleared up they're, they're going to need legal help for decades to come to clear up this mess and the locals like to argue and sue each other for just about anything so don't let that deter you i mean there's plenty of opportunity if you're a young professional in this city and you studied law i mean it, 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 let's just say you just went to like ninth grade when you know in a normal community if you went to college you know that's a competitive edge when you enter the labor force here if you're a ninth ninth grade student I mean, you could probably be the manager somewhere. I mean, that's how little emphasis this community has placed on education. From a young age, they bring up their kids to believe in putting, like, long horns on the front of the trucks and becoming experts on lowering vehicles and stuff like that. 
no emphasis on education has left the labor force, the local labor force, completely depleted of any type of talent. You can see this house here on the left has a window unit instead of central air conditioning. The city of Tyler, Texas actually banned central air conditioners. By doing this, they're going to lower uh, CO2 emissions. Horrible education in this town. A lot of their lawmakers don't know what they're reading. I mean, they get sent grants and they use them in the wrong ways. Uh, they, you know, they're told by the EPA, hey, uh, the landfill needs to do this, and they do, they, it's just, they don't know what they're doing, and it's created a lot of confusion, but it's also created a lot of business opportunity for people who have at least a ninth grade education. When I say there's a lot of opportunity in Tyler, Texas, I mean, they get bills, they get grants, they get all these things from the government, and they have absolutely no idea what they're supposed to do with these things. So the first person that makes a suggestion that sounds logical, let's just run with that. I failed to mention the town's history on the video, so let's get into that. As I said, the population is declining in this city, and it mostly has to do with asbestos. The city's building ordinance requires that every home have at least 500 pounds of asbestos installed, and it has led to the demise of the city's population by up to 3% annually. A city council may have found a loophole where the city is able to sue itself for injury costs upon its residents, and they've been able to use those funds for massive infrastructure projects, not only in the city, but also in the entire county. Turns out that the federal government actually has to subsidize these expenses when they go beyond the city's funds. So by reducing the city's population through asbestos poisoning, they've been able to bring a lot of money to the city. And they're going to have their first middle school. However, being Texas, it's going to be the largest middle school in the country. Experts believe that by 2040, this middle school will be complete and it will be the largest middle school, not only in Texas or the United States, but in the entire universe. By doing this, Texas will also have the highest graduation rate in the entire country as they'll not be able to include these students as ungraduated until they have been able to finish their high school education. So in the meantime, they're really focused on kindergarten and the city gave them the opportunity to design the city's logo to have a contest to see who could create a logo for the city. They decided to plaster the town's logo, which was created through a contest for kindergarten students. They used those federal funds to put that logo all over their water tanks, their buses, their bus stops, and over 150 murals throughout the entire city with the town's logo, which is the letter T for Tyler, with a giant tamale right in the middle. Of course, these are just file photos because they had outdated programs. So I tell you all that so that we can actually enter the history. In a tragic, catastrophic war mistake, instead of attacking the north, they went south and encountered Mexican troops wearing winter clothes, scorching heat. They thought they were heading into the frigid north to attack troops from Wisconsin. Ended up being Pancho Villa. Most of their men suffocated in the heavy clothing they were wearing. So by 1865, when all the other states were in the middle of a war, Texas, and specifically the region of Tyler and their troops, had already entered the reconstruction process as they had been in war with French fur traders and Pancho Villa's troops and were in no condition to actually participate in the Civil War like all the other states were as they had already injured or lost most of their men to the scorching heat of the desert while wearing winter clothes. And this allowed the economy to flourish for a small period. However, by 1870, disastrous decisions in the town's planning and economical endeavors had reached a climax when they decided that they were going to turn 7,000 square miles surrounding the city into mango plantations this is a huge investment. Everybody put everything they had into these mango plantations. Turns out that mangoes don't grow very well in Texas. And by the end of the year, the city had hit a massive economical decline. A turtle farming fever gripped the town. Thinking that the East desperately needed turtle meat, many of the local residents invested everything they had. And they decimated the local creeks and ponds looking for native Texas turtles. They're called the Texas Turtleneck Turtles, which are now extinct due to their endeavors. Finally, in 1937, the city caught a break in all of its economical disasters. The population did eventually grow over 100,000, and it started with 
the endeavors of a local economist called David Thomas while trying to make spoke wheels for the coming world wars. They knew the first world war had passed and they knew that eventually Europe would enter another war. The climate was already indicating that as trouble had already started in Spain and other countries. They accidentally invented the poking wheel. Now these wheels are the ones that you see in Texas where they poke at about two feet. Well, these wheels were actually invented in 1937 by chemists right there. They were going to start to make wheels that were eventually supposed to be used in war machinery. However, some type of accident within the molds, something went wrong. The molds or the, the engineers didn't know what the crap they were doing. They read the plans wrong and they invented the poking wheel, which became an really popular in Houston to this day. Initially these wheels became popular in Houston and other cities throughout the country were invented accidentally here in Tyler, Texas and they've sold so many of these wheels that it actually led to the city being able to make an entire economy based around a factory that employed people and was able to bring economy and manufacturing back to the city. However, the real hit for the city was in 1942 where most of the city's infrastructure and downtown buildings and many of the things that we see in the city today were actually put in thanks to another scientist from this area. While trying to find a cure for heart disorders, a local scientist created fluorescent light bulbs by accident. Apparently they were burning mercury and other gases inside of a tube that he thought could be used to put people inside of. While the first few patients suffered long-term ailments from this disastrous experiment, they noted how few efficient these light bulbs were and how bright the tubes were, which eventually, after removing the patients from inside and turning them to a little bit smaller capsule, led to the invention of the modern-day fluorescent light bulb. And that was invented in 1942 in Tyler, Texas. And that is the brief history of Tyler, Texas. Another thing that happened more recently, as you can tell, the city has some type of skyline. The city was actually able to install giant skyscrapers, as you can see, for, you know, you wouldn't expect a city this big to actually have a skyline. You know, they're able to generate a lot of solar power to focus all the light into this device that turns into solar energy. So in the morning, it creates energy and solar energy for the town. And then later on in the day, you know, avoid Main Street because people's mirrors are melting off their cars and uh, actual cars have been known to catch fire. People have been known to fry an egg on the side of the road. It's, it's a beautiful success story where even though they've had catastrophe after catastrophe economically, they've been able to find loopholes, sue people. I guess they were able to extort the neighboring town of Longview into providing garbage collection services for their town. Billion dollar building that, you know, Longview has to process all their garbage and waste. And uh, Tyler said, you know what, we're going to put another one of these skyscrapers and we're going to, you know, aim it at your facility. It's a bend our facility and it's just going to blow up your facility. If you don't want to collect our garbage for free, we'll do that. So uh, they were able to kind of extort the neighboring town into that. And now the city has free garbage collection. So even though the city's been through so many hurdles and so many hardships and economical disasters, they've always found a way to sue somebody, extort somebody, or find a loophole to give the residents of the city their basic needs, garbage collection, paved roads, and all that. Some way or another, somebody's paying for it, uh, and it all gets done. And uh, you can only thank the, the city here for doing a great job and making sure that the people in this town have everything they need. They're offering, if you move from California, they're giving you a free license plate where they can get their Texas license plates for free. This has brought in over $5 million in the last year in additional revenue to the city, which is using to buy a brass statue of a bull from the city of New York and a cast iron statue of the Balkan, which is in Birmingham, Alabama. These two statues will soon be right here in Tyler, Texas. All that with the revenue of the people's cars from California, and they sold to a scrapyard. The city believes that these items will be incredible tourist attractions, which will help bring people to the city as tourists. Hey, and there it is. That's everything you need to know about Tyler, Texas, its history, its people, and also a little bit about its future. The city is going to commemorate a statue for Hank Williams Jr. 
who has absolutely no ties to the city, but uh, it's believed that something of that sort could actually bring tours to the town. Thank you guys so much. If you're wondering where we got our information from, I want to thank the team at the Canoe Radio Station for sending us an email letting us know all of the town's history and information since our first video just wasn't good enough. All right, and as always, remember, there is a non-association disclaimer on this YouTube channel, and everything that we say is just my personal opinion, and we are by no means portraying any of these things as actual or factual. This is just my personal opinion of how these events took place, and you should by no means hold me accountable for whatever the crap this video does.